Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day and today's video is a monthly favorites and fails for April 2022. Can you believe this year is almost halfway over? It's kind of crazy. But today we're going to do my favorites and fails. I did not test out an enormous amount of things in April, but I did test out enough that I want to talk about it. I only have like one true fail, I think, but I have some mixed feelings with other things too. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Real quick, I do want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Dossier. I want to thank them so much for working with me. It's always a pleasure. Like, it's a company I can get behind because I don't like wasting money for no reason other than a label. So Dossier gives you the same luxury high-end fragrances at a fraction of the cost as like a drugstore, a Sephora, a Macy's, a Nordstrom, where they can cost like $350 for fragrance, which is insane because you're going to smell the same with Dossier, but only pay $29 to $49, which is a huge fraction of the cost so you're getting the same exact scent but at a fraction of the cost because why are you paying for a name on a label that doesn't make sense to me but dossier makes tons of sense because they have tons of dupes for your favorite fragrances that you're used to for high-end fragrances they come in this nice clean sleek packaging easy to read and also look beautiful in their cabinet if you're into the minimalism, minimalism thing this is beautiful packaging for you and also shout out to musky oak moss which is the scent i've been using personally while moving it's the one fragrance i had out while i was moving because i knew it'd be sweating and i wanted to smell nice and this one has like a musky man scent to it anyways so this is the fragrance i had out personally in the moving process but let me introduce you to other scents today so this one is floral marshmallow which you know that name intrigued me so here's what the packaging looks like it is a really pretty bottle with kind of an ambery color this is inspired by killian's love don't be shy perfume this is 18 percent concentrate has top notes of marshmallow and bergamot and honeysuckle as under notes Ooh, okay okay so many just, other than like the notes and stuff this one smells sweet and fruity without being overwhelmingly fruity which i think is where the marshmallow kind of downplays it it has a sugary sweet kind of like cute uh feeling to it so this one's floral marshmallow and the other one i wanted to share with you today again beautiful packaging is woody chestnut so this one is inspired by mason margiela you know some fancy brands replica by the fireplace which you know sounds fancy but woody chestnut you guys i love a woody manly smell you know i just love that and it's also you know unisex Ooh, this one has like a musk but it's very light to it yeah it's very light musk i definitely see why they choose the word hazel or chestnut for it sorry because it's light has a little bit of nuttiness the undertones of this are pink pepper orange blossom cloves there's garlic wood cedar wood in there it smells fantastic so if you guys are interested in a luxury fragrance with a fraction of the cost save you some money because like you can smell nice and no one's gonna know you don't have the fancy bottle it doesn't matter i will leave dossier's link down below thank you guys so much for working with me please check it out and now let's get started with the monthly favorites and fails for april okay so i'm not gonna do these in any particular order because well, what fun is that? You know, I do want to start off with the non makeup things first, just because it's the things that I use the most in April. And because, well, quite frankly, there's a lot of days I haven't been wearing makeup lately because I haven't had the time. Okay, so let's start off with the first thing. This is from Kate Somerville. We got this in a boxy charm a few months ago. I may have talked about it once previously. This is the goat milk moisturizing cleanser. I love goat milk products. And <laughs> truth be told, in the packing process, my favorite milk drops from Beekman 1802 are in one of the boxes and I can't find it. My skin has been trash without it. However, as far as cleansing all the oil and sweat off my face and dirt and paint particles, this cleanser with goat milk in it has been very nice, very easy to use. It doesn't feel like it strips my skin of any initial moisture. I feel like it does a really good job. And for being in a boxy charm, I'm here for it. So if you guys want to check it out, it's from Kate Somerville. You can look it up on Depop or Poshmark or Macar. You're one of those reselling apps. A lot of times people have it in a subscription box because they don't want to try it. They try to resell it for like way less than you would pay for a retail price. But I will leave the retail price of it on the screen for you as well. This is a really nice cleanser. Like I've already used at least half of it i quite enjoy it as like my go-to cleanser because i don't like my skin feeling very stripped because my skin is already very naturally dry next thing i want to talk about is from verse now this is a skincare brand i'm just trying out for the first time this is the dew point moisturizing gel cream with green tea extract and aloe leaf juice i like a gel cream because it feels very wet and cold and soothing on the skin this has been very very nice for me i feel like 
you know sometimes moisturizers that are gel based can be a little too oily this one is not it's perfectly cool and nice it absorbs into the skin very well and you only need a little bit a little bit goes a long way with this kind of water-based gel situation it feels fresh and clean and i enjoy it a lot now next up i'm not on their pr list but i did get this in exchange for like giving my text review letting them know what i think of this this is from briogeo i wish i was on their pr list trust me this is unreleased but i'm gonna tell you how i feel about it now so when it comes out you know, if you like it, you can check it out then. This is the Briogeo Superfoods Avocado and Kiwi Mega Moisture 3-in-1 Leave-In Spray. This is really nice smelling. It smells very fresh and clean. It's not super heavy because I spray it into my hand and then apply it to my hair rather than just spraying junk on my head so I can control how much product, you know. I really like this. My husband likes it for his very dry scalp. For me, on my very oily scalp with dry ends, I feel like it's nice. I wish there was a heat protectant in there though, because people like me who have a very oily scalp, we can't put a ton of products in our hair. If I have a leave-in, that's great for my ends. But for the price point of Briogeo, I wish that it had some heat protection in it. That's just kind of a nitpicky thing, but it does smell fresh. If you have a very dry scalp, I think you'd really love this. You could spray it directly all over the place. It smells fantastic does its job but Frigio prices I'm just gonna be a little nitpicky and say I wish there was some heat protection there for people who can't put a lot of products in their hair let's move on to eyeshadow palettes now because why not so the first eyeshadow palette we got in a I want to say it's an ipsy or a boxy charm I think it was ipsy for April this is the sour you doing eyeshadow palette from beauty bakery now I thought this like lemonade cutesy theme was pretty cute sour you doing is better than some of the puns i've heard on makeup lately honestly like this apricot you not is weird from ColourPop, you know but this one from beauty bakery i really like the color scheme i think these yellows are beautiful and that's exactly why i wanted to try it um i've used a couple other shades in this palette so far the yellow is my favorite especially because the shimmer is beautiful this shimmer is very subtle though i would say with there only being three shimmers this one this one and this one oh wait no is this one this one and this one so we have like a brown a light shade and a yellow shimmer sorry it's hard for me to like do the viewfinder thing sometimes i will say this is the only true shimmer that i enjoy i will say this one's very soft and subtle this one's very kind of like a, a a light shimmery satin kind of formula i wish the shimmers were more in your face however the color scheme is very nice but for being a lemonade theme i want more yellow you know how are you doing i think is a very cute thing i like the fall colors in here with the yellow the formula is very nice but i just wish the shimmers were more the shimmers are very subtle and i don't really enjoy that too much but the yellow one looks nice next up i have very minimal eye makeup on today i have very minimal makeup on in general compared to my, my normal like full coverage everything um but i am wearing this eyeshadow <laughs> so this is the sigma new mod palette i do have a discount code with sigma on a code i'll leave a link down below you can use my link or my code if you want to and if you don't, that's okay too. I'm not going to take offense. <laughs> this is the new Mod Palette. This is so cute. So here it is. Now, I'm not really like a pinks person, right? But there's so many different tones in here. We have the neutrally side, which are very, very pretty, as well as some coppers and gold, and as well as a black. These shades, you know, a little more red than I would typically go for, like a little more purple, but they perform so, so nicely. Like today, I just used this shade under my brow bone, this in my crease very lightly, and then this on my lid. And it just made the easiest little beautiful thing. I think the shimmers in here are pretty because they're very metallic and easy to glide over. They're not in your face like crazy glittery or anything or like super, super metallic. They're like a soft, easy, everyday kind of metallic that's very pretty, reflects light beautifully. And every look you do with this or every look I've done with it anyways has been just super pretty without a lot of effort. And I love the shades that just go well together. And I don't have to worry about blending for 100 years. This palette has been lovely. However, if you do have animals, this kind of soft material does collect pet hair just a disclaimer next up the biggest thing i reviewed in april the jeffree star beauty killer 2 collection i'm gonna talk about the eyeshadow palette and the highlighter palette first the eyeshadow palette i'm gonna put this in the fail category it's not the fail that i was talking about as like my biggest disappointment but it's up there it's it, it performs fine right the performance is fine ah it's the color scheme it's the color scheme i like the thin packaging from jeffrey that's nice but this feels so random to me this feels like a palette that someone just like you know close their eyes and pick colors in the dark they don't go well together like okay we do have a pairing of two purples that go well together and we do have two neutrally shades and a black and a silver but 
like the pairings aren't very good i did a three looks one palette video if you haven't seen it i'll leave a link down below if i remember because sometimes i don't remember and i did a first impression so i did four looks overall with it and once i was done with those videos i haven't touched it since because quite truly it is hard to think of things to do with this color scheme quality is fine there's a couple of shades that i wish were like pumped up just a little more um and i like the thin packaging like i said but it's so weird like if i didn't i would not buy this on my own if i was not a youtuber let's put it that way i would not know what to do with it if i was not forcing myself to do it for a video <laughs> like in my daily life i don't see myself reaching for something this complicated to use and maybe sometimes you need that you need that little bit of something different to make you force views your creativity a little bit but i wouldn't choose that color scheme to force myself out of cre like my comfort zone i don't know anyways the ice crusher palette the highlighter palette from this collection i'm so glad to see his regular original skin frost formula back in action with new products because his other highlighters just like the supreme frost and the extreme frost and liquid frost they're just they're not the same they're just not the same as the original skin frost and this ice crusher palette i say there's a little more glitter in here than i originally expected um in some of the shades i noticed there's like little chunks of glitter in my highlighter however it's really nice i have not used this shade because that's not gonna work on my skin tone you can use it as an eyeshadow people are gonna say i don't want to use a highlighter as an eyeshadow i want to use my eyeshadow as eyeshadow i don't want to be th using my eyeshadow and think wait hold on i need to find this highlighter i'm not gonna do it you guys i'm not but I think everything else in here is really pretty. The purpley shades are fun. These light three first shades are the ones I've been using the most. Quite truly, this one's my favorite one. It is Ice Pick Headache. It has like a little bit of a pinkiness under to it. It's very nice. Very easy to use. Even the blue one, it does stand off as like a little blue on the skin. But it's not like weird looking. I think this is lovely. If you don't mind a little bit of glitter in your highlighter, it's very metallic. It reads well on the skin. Very pretty. Not as much base highlighter as some other highlighters where you'll notice a different coloration on your skin. Like this one is very white base. These are a little more see-through, but it looks nice anyways. So I like it because it's very metallic and icy. Um, that's it for the Jeffree Star stuff. Let's talk about my fail, which technically I tried last couple days of april first couple days of may but it's going in the april favorites and fails because i don't want to forget about it i was so hyped if you guys saw this unfiltered opinions video i talked about how much i was in love with how this looked this collection looks so stunning and beautiful to me but i don't like it so this is from ofra this is their liquid highlighter this is their first ever liquid highlighter as far as i know this is in the shade monroe which i love Marilyn monroe there's a picture of her above me up there um i yeah. okay so the pump cute nice packaging kind of a plastic it's kind of cute and nice because you know if it was glass it'd weigh more to ship it would cost more to ship and you know if i drop it i break it plastic's nice the component's nice the color lovely i wish it came in a slightly lighter shade but that's okay and this shade worked fine for me as is i don't like it because it just feels like it slicks on my face and there's no metallic sheen like it's very glowy in the thing right and then when you put your finger like this looks very metallic very glow when you dab it into your skin it gets lost in your foundation like you put on your foundation and concealer and then you throw this on top is like a liquid on top of your base is what i do with liquid highlighters anyways but for this it just gets lost i feel like it didn't really show up it just got lost and it started to move my concealer a little baby bit not as much as some other ones that i've tried but i just didn't see the payoff i was like mm. i did all this blending with my finger made my finger all dirty with liquid highlighter you know you could have put on a sponge or something but i didn't see any payoff if you're wearing this on bare skin maybe it'd be like really pretty but over foundation it just didn't do anything for me which is very unfortunate for me to say because it is it's gorgeous in there look it's so pretty but it didn't it didn't show up for me next up let's talk about the foundation that i'm wearing today which is very light coverage you know um i don't know if you can tell my skin looks really good on camera like my skin feels very good and glowy i wore like minimal minimal makeup today is like kind of trying to be looking fresh but this is the it cosmetics cc plus nude glow color correcting medium coverage skin tint with spf 40. spf has been very important to me as we've been trying to work on our yard and i just think this is so pretty now this is in the shade fair which they have a lot of sh fair shades that are kind of yellowy based this one's kind of on the pinker end which is nice because again i'm tired of getting yellowy fair shades 
this is a beautiful color i love the coverage it's very light very minimal very easy to blend out and it looks like you're not wearing any foundation at all until you put your concealer on and then give yourself all the coverage you need honestly it's just really easy to work with very dewy very glowy your skin but better like they advertise it's, it's true it's lovely it's very nice but for someone like me who has dry skin um i do have to blend a little extra on my dry patches just blend a little extra and if you have oily skin just set it with a powder i still think you'd really enjoy it it's not like overly dewy on the skin you could wear it without powder if you have dry skin but if you have oily skin just powder a little bit i still think it'd look nice and refreshing on your skin Hope that made sense. I said the word skin a lot. Okay, next up, the one size beauty contour thing. So this is called the Made for Shade Bronzing and Sculpting Trio. This is the fair one. I like this packaging because like you open, hold on, you figure it out. Oh, it's this side. They're like two little things and they snap together. So this is the fair trio for contour. I love it. I think it's very nice. Now, I will say, this is a little warm for me, so I've been using it to like hide my double chin. However, the other two shades work beautiful as a contour. I think it's a really lovely palette. They're very matte, soft, fluffy shades. You can pick it up with a really dense brush. You can pick it up with a very light brush for some light contouring. I think it works out lovely. I do, however, think maybe this will be like a highlight, like under your cheek area. It's a little dark for that. But these two shades mixed together for my contour has been absolutely beautiful to work with. So this, and I like this beautiful packaging. It's been very nice. Like, I didn't expect it to enjoy it as much as I have been. So I do see myself eventually hitting pan on this product. Next up is from Floresis. Now, I did a whole video testing out a bunch of their new products. And this one was just kind of, like, under the radar. It's just, like, a lip primer that I've been using as a lip balm. So it was nice. But I don't think it was really the highlight of that video. But this lip primer, you guys, is beautiful packaging. Very nice. Very sleek. It makes a beautiful lip balm. I know it's technically a lip primer to make your lips all soft or anything before applying ah, a lipstick on or something. As just a regular lip balm, very smooth, very slick, very nice on the lips, very, very nice and easy. I've been using it a ton. And then also on my face today, hold on. Oh, this is gonna be weird. I'm zooming in my face. So some of these are real freckles, like this is a real one. Um, some of these are fake. Can you tell which ones are real, which one's fake? You'd probably think that one was real by, or fake if I didn't tell you. Can you tell which ones my freckles are real, which ones are fake? Maybe not, because this product is subtle, but in like the best way, like, with my light foundation, my light skin tint on right now, you can see my freckles through it. And then I added a couple extra ones with this. So this is from She Glam, which is Shein, like the makeup, or the Shein, like the, the affordable clothing company. She Glam, they have a makeup line. This is their freckle pen. This is called, oh no, I can't read it. It's very light on light thing. Uh, Freck Please Freckle Tint. They come in fun shades. They come in blue. They come in pink. They come in darker tones as well. This is the color Fawn, which is their lightest one. This has been so nice for days where I just want to look kind of cute and subtle, like I'm not trying too hard. I added an extra product to make it look like I'm not trying too hard, which is trying more. But regardless, this has just been really easy to use. It looks super cute. And then you can't tell which freckles are fake. I've been having a hard time with freckle pins in the last two years or so because they always come off super, super warm. Even if there are different shades, for some reason, even the lightest shade comes off very warm and I have very cool toned skin. This has been like a lifesaver because for once, there's freckle pins that aren't super warm on me. And like, again, like... Some are real, some are fake, and I know you can't tell the difference, and that's amazing. Anyways, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. This was fun. Like, I miss talking about makeup products, you know, um, because my life has been focused on other things at the moment, but I'm trying to get, like, a good mix and find the balance, you know? If you guys haven't checked out Dossier, I will leave them linked in the top of the description box for you, as well as my small business, theopencrypt.com, which I hope to do a office tour of my shop stuff soon i think it's gonna be fun but thank you guys so much i hope you have an awesome day let me know something down below that you have been enjoying lately or hated you know i'm here to hear what you wanted to hate on too but thank you i will see you later bye have a great day